amen and amen. All right. Hey, it's great to see you this morning. How's everybody? We good? you all ready to open the Word of God. I want you to grab your Bible and uh, you can turn to Revelation 21. Hey, while you're turning there, and I'm going to get there in a bit, so hang with me. Um, it is springtime. feels like summertime, right? It is hot out there. Uh, David was talking about you being here, not at the lake or something else, and you're thinking, yeah, because I don't have a lake to go to. That's why I'm here. I wish I was at the lake. Um, but hey, no, this is better than the lake, and we've got a message today that I think is going to really encourage you and bless your life. Uh, I love this time of year, so I'm a little hyped today. Uh, love Memorial Day weekend. Um, you know, it's not that we, I guess we celebrate Memorial Day weekend, but gosh, for those who have lost uh, loved ones, you know, in, in the war or somehow who've served our, our country, even our our police and others, we remember the great sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice of your life, of their lives for us. And so we pray for those families. You know, this is a time of grieving and loss and remembrance for a lot of people. So that's what the weekend's about. But we uh, are excited about the day. And uh, we got a great, we're going to close our service with, with special little something, something, little surprise. So we're grateful that you're here. Um, so I love this time of the year uh, because it's, it's supposed to be springtime. Again, we catapulted into summer, it seems. But I love the summertime. For me, in my work, I guess it's true for a lot of us, um, kind of a cycle uh, where we really go hard, you know, at it in the fall and the springtime, Easter, and then bam, we, we find ourselves here at a time where you can kind of push back a little bit. And so a year ago, uh, some of you know, it was this month, a year ago, uh, you don't know this, I had been through a really challenging uh, season of life, just for a lot of different reasons. And, and uh, just crazy busy here uh, at the church, and we were minus some staff members that were key, uh, and now they've been filled, praise God. But at the time, we just went through a really busy season, wonderful season, but I was wiped out. And so I was just marking the calendar, really, like, here comes, you know, the day when things are going to slow down a little bit. And so I was uh, really excited. There was, a, there was this one day. It was May 8th, actually. And, um, and I decided, man, I'm going to go for a ride. I'm just going to take a break, get on my bike, and it is springtime. And uh, many of you know this story. So I'm on this ride, literally, like, mark the day. This is a great day. Summer's coming. Oh, I'm, I'm optimistic. Things are getting better. And then... Bam! I was hit uh, on my bike by a car, uh, and it just blew me up. I mean, I broke my ankle in three places. My foot was literally, I'm sorry, it was just like this. And uh, I knew right away, I'm laying on the pavement, and what was going through my mind was, I cannot believe this just happened. I can't, I can't even believe this happened. You know, you're going through life and you're like, you know, and we all have seasons like this um, where, yes, you know, things are going to get better. And, oh, I walked through a difficult, challenging season. Bam! Something else comes along. I'm finally through this season of, man, really hard time with my kids or vocational change or relational challenge. I've walked through a real season of anxiety and it's been a hard time, time of depression. I'm finally coming out and coming out. Bam! No, I'm not. I'm back, I'm back down again. I mean, I was literally knew that, that I was really hurt. And so I knew this is, I mean, it's surgery. It's, I, there goes my spring. There goes my summer. You know, my favorite time of the year. And so I, I'm especially hyped today. Um, you know, like, let's stay off your bike, Jeff. It's, you know, just a stationary bike or something. Can't do it because um, I just love being out too much. I say that because have you ever I mean, have you ever been through a season like that? Or have you ever sensed that, that life is just one struggle after the next? Do you ever just want to give up? We've all been there. We've all been there where we go through seasons of whether it's physical pain, it could be emotional pain or mental illness. We're challenged with depression or worry or anxiety. We all get there. And then you, you add to that our personal challenges vocational, relational challenge that, that we all have, you put behind that the backdrop or the soundtrack of our lives, if you watch news at all, right? Just how crazy our world can be. This week, they canceled. It might be happening, may not happen. The North Korean summit, you have tensions with North Korea. You've got Russia. I'm understanding they got 2,000 plus nuclear bombs. You know, I'm sorry. Well, now I'm worried. Jeff, thanks. You know, I'm getting anxious. Um, we got tension. In Washington, all the craziness coming out of Washington. We got another 
school shooting, and just you just wonder, right? But have you ever thought about this? When things are really challenging and difficult, why do we have this sense within us that things should be better? Now, I don't know if that's a weird question. But a lot of people, you know, they, they say, well, all the evil and suffering in the world, I just can't believe in God because there's all this evil and suffering. And you kind of, you know, one challenge is, wait, 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 why should things be better? I mean, what are, you, what are you talking about? Like, it's all relative. Where are you starting as a baseline? Why should things be better? Well, they just should be. And there, see, I could argue that that is actually an argument for God, not against God. Because God has dealt with our pain and our suffering. There's a reason that this world is fallen and broken and sinful. There's a reason that things are the way. There's a reason this soundtrack in our minds and our hearts is going on. We live in a fallen world. We live in this tension. It's what theologians talk about, the the already and the not yet. In fact, if you sense this tension within you that things ought to be better, that we're are we not heading somewhere better than this? It's exactly what Paul talks about in Romans 8. I told you to turn to Revelation 21. Hang there. Listen to this. I wanted to read this whole these few verses. Listen to what he says. He describes it. He says, This is exactly what's going on. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Notice he says, in us. It's going to happen. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. This is interesting. All of creation is watching for us, the children of God, to be revealed in the end time. Revealed in what way? Brand new, totally made right. All things in us included. For the creation was subjected to frustration. Not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. Okay, Because of our fallen nature, our sin. In hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We just sang about the freedom that we have in Christ. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. What an incredible image and analogy. I mean, any pregnant women in the house, you're like, something is alive, and it's coming. It's coming. It's going to happen. And any woman that's given birth knows knows this better than any of us men. All of creation is like this. Come on, something's happening. It's It's going to change everything. Not only so, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we eagerly We wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship. Now, women, don't let that throw you too much. Sonship, what about us? You know, what about women and girls? Listen, he's saying male, female. Sonship meant inheritance. Inheritance. Okay, you get everything that was the father's. Everybody's brought into this who has received Christ. Adoption to to sonship. The redemption of our bodies. And he's talking about our bodies now. He focuses on us, in us, our bodies, for in this hope we were saved. He's saying this is why you were saved. It's moving to something. Everything is going somewhere. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. That's that's not hope, right? That's reality. Who hopes in what they already have? Paul is saying this is what you're sensing. There's a waiting, and we're all waiting. Why do we have this homing device within us? And especially when you become a believer in Christ, he plants within us this homing device. It's already there for all people. I've noted the, the atheist is like the person who, who bought a new boomerang and then they about killed themselves trying to throw away their old one. It's like, no, there is no God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe so. Nope, there's no God. Right? No God. A baby's born. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. Maybe there is a God. There is no God. Massive sunset, some joyful day, you fall in love, maybe there is a God. And what happens in us as believers is he places within us this homing device. You are my son, you're my daughter, and this is all heading somewhere. And today I have the great privilege of talking about where this is going. We've been talking about what's next, asking the question, what's next? And today we're going to talk about what's next forever. I want to plant in your mind, in your heart. No, the scriptures will do this. I get to talk about a passage that we often use over uh, in a funeral, over a graveside. I get to speak among the living. 
for us to talk about where all this is heading because where you're heading makes all the difference in the world. Where you believe all of this is going changes how you live today. But the question I think that we wrestle with often, how? Like some of you are here, like, Jeff, I believe in heaven. We just want gifts here. Like quick would be good. Or, 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 or even young people are like, I don't want to go to heaven. i got too much life ahead of me, right? I want to get married or something. Or, uh, okay, heaven is, is so far beyond anything we could ever experience here. If we caught just a glimpse of it for a moment, we'd say, take me out right now. I'm ready to go. But the thing I want you to see today is, we talked about this Easter Sunday. Heaven is not so much from here to there as it is from now to then. You'll catch what I mean here in a moment. Because often we think of heaven just kind of evac me out. I am out, and we're going to all just kind of float off somewhere, and and we're going to leave the earth behind. No, we're not. And the beauty of of this passage is that we get to see what's next forever. C.S. Lewis is the one who said, the fact that our hearts yearn for what this earth cannot provide is proof That heaven is our home. He says there's something in us that's pushing us towards what God has next. Think about this just for a moment. Imagine two people who are given the same job. Let's say it's a menial task and it's hard work. You got to persevere through the work. And one, at the beginning of the year, it's like, hey, will you stay the course every day? Just come into work, do your deal. Not not a real hard job, but it's, you know, it's it's taxing. Uh, You're going to get a million dollars at the end of the year. Another guy comes in, same job. Hey, bro, listen, work hard. You're going to get $10,000 at the end of the year, all right? Now, you tell me, who's going to be more motivated to stay the course? Who's going to persevere? Who's going to whistle while he works? It'll be the one who's getting the million dollars. See, where your life, where you think it's heading, changes everything and should change every single day we live. So think about it. Sure enough, whatever you believe about eternity, it, it should impact the way that you live, and the way you die. It's what Peter called a living hope. And this is the challenge I think we have as believers. I, like many of us, we're like, I believe in heaven, Jeff. I'm not real clear about what it's like, but I'm, I, it's going to be awesome. And I believe I'm going there because I've received Christ. Now, not everybody in here can say that. But Peter said there's a living hope. Look at what he says in 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us, okay, he's done this thing, to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He's tying a living now hope to the resurrection, which happened 2,000 years ago. Okay, wait, so we're here 2,000 years ago. Resurrection totally impacts my life and hope for now for what is coming in the future. Yes. And I want us to talk about how, how does this happen? How do we live with hope? So, Revelation 21 uh, we're going to look at verses 1 through 8. I told you to get there. And now, before we read it, I want to place it in context a little bit. I want us to be clear, again, about where we're heading. All of creation is headed. I said this on Easter Sunday. Headed towards a resurrected people on a resurrected earth, worshiping a resurrected Savior. And, 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 and we know that Revelation has something to do with a lot of uh, apocalyptic kind of imagery and language and that kind of thing. But, but, but John, the beloved disciple, is now the oldest disciple of them all, or he's the, he's the only one alive. I mean, he lives longer than all the others. He's the only one that we think died in exile of natural causes. All the others have been martyred at this point, minus Judas. He's the only one who's still alive because Nero becomes the emperor at the time, right, after, right there at the resurrection, and, and he's coming after believers. And now Domitian, we think, is the emperor. We don't know exactly the time. But I, I tend to think Domitian now is the emperor. Nero is known to have been a tyrant. I mean, persecuting Christians, killing them, feeding them to wild lions for sport, lighting them on fire so that he could show an example to everybody. I mean, there's just gruesome kinds of, of stories that are told out of our history John is writing to these people. He's writing directly to these people. So what does he give them? He gives them this. So if you're here today and you think, man, I'm kind of under persecution or my life is challenged. No, 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 no. Nothing like what these people are going through. You and I will never experience, I don't believe, 
what these are experiencing. So much so, and we know that they took this message we're about to see, and they lived it out because as they were martyred, as early believers were killed, the gospel flourished. The gospel advanced. Why? Because they applied what we're going to learn today. So much so that Tertullian, one of the early church fathers, early church leaders said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. They watched them die with eternal hope, and it changed their lives. And the gospel advanced. So listen to what it says in Revelation 21. I love this passage. In fact, uh, verse 15 at the end of 20, it says, And if anyone's name was not written in the Lamb's book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So there's this book of life that has the names of those who have received Christ, his grace, and trusted him with their eternity. Verse 1 of 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now, heaven is just, in Scripture, it's really all that is around, in this case, all that's around the earth. Okay, it's, it's, it's the skies. Okay, but he says, and I saw this new earth. For the first earth and the first, first heaven and first earth had, had passed away. It's, it's transitioned as we're going to see. Uh, and the sea was no more. That's interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Wow. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, okay, look, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Friends, listen to this. Whatever you're going through today, death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Count on it. And he said to to me, it is done. It's finished. I'm the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I'm I'm uh, I'm from A to Z. I've got it all covered. I'm, I'm from the front to the back, from beginning to end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. It's grace, all grace. Verse 7, the one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Kind of hearkening back to what Peter was saying. Verse 8, but as for the cowardly, those who don't trust me, those who don't give me their lives, the faithless, who don't believe, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexual immoral, is, is, is played out this way, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So you see, there's a, there's a first death, there's a second death, there's a, there's a new life, there, there's heaven, and then at, at the consummation of all things, there's the new earth where we receive our resurrected bodies. We find ourselves on a resurrected earth as it was meant to be, as his resurrected people worshiping a resurrected Savior. And God is with us. It's like going back to the, to the garden, to the way that it was originally meant to be. He's going to be among us and be with us, and we have access to God directly. Forever is better. And I want to talk about three reasons as to why it's better. First of all, our forever is better than our past. All right, now you say, well, I hope so, right, in its tension. But look at this. It's better because it's new and improved. Look at verse 1. It says new. I want you to understand this, not only in terms of time, but in form and quality. You could say it's renewed. It's a new earth. You say, well, it's, is it earth or is it new? It's, it's earth. It's a new, renewed, resurrected earth as it's meant to be. This is heaven on earth. Heaven is not off in the sky somewhere. A lot of people think, well, I don't, I don't even know if I want to go to heaven. I'm just going to be floating around in clouds, playing a harp. I don't even like the harp. I don't know, the harp's okay. but I, I, No, no, no. I'm going to be angels. We're going to be flying around. You know, God, if you think somebody died, God's going to have a new angel. No, no, they're angels. And then they're resurrected people. Those are two different things. And, and, and you see, God, look, look at what's happening here. This is not us being evacuated up and out. This is heaven coming to earth. 
And a lot of us need to get a clearer picture when we think, man, what a beautiful day this is. Right? This weekend, it's like, oh, my gosh. There are moments in time where we like, I don't know if, I mean, this is awesome. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a foretaste of glory divine is what the hymn writer said. Fanny Crosby he wrote, it's, it's, it's coming. It's out there. Friends, you know it. It's coming. And, 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 it, and it means that we're going to receive this, this new body. You see, like the incarnation, God coming to us in Christ, heaven coming to earth, and Christ's prayer for his will, the Father's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, will be accomplished. He's not going to, you know, at, at the end of time, when Christ comes again, it is closing time. He's coming with the keys, and he says, game over. Here we go. And I believe it's then that the new heaven, the new earth are merged. They become one. Jerusalem, the city, comes down to us. We're not ghosts. We're resurrected people. It's why Jesus said, when he, you want to know what our resurrected bodies are like? You look at Jesus and those places in Scripture where he, he was resurrected and among the people. Not the exact same body, but they knew who he was. We're going to know each other. We're going to do life together. We're going to celebrate with one another. He even says, hey, give me something to eat, fellas. And they're like, wait, he's not a ghost. He's, no, I'm not a ghost. I'm, no, look, at, touch me. I'm not a ghost. He resurrected in bodily form, and we will do the same, where our bodies will be indestructible. We, we will never die. It, it's like this. You ever look at pictures of your parents or your grandparents when they were younger? Like you find something in a drawer. It's like, oh, my gosh, look at that. This is not, are you kidding me? You got hair. What? You know, I mean, it's like, what is this? And you look at a, a picture and everybody's like, oh, man, look, like, I forgot you were, I, you were young. Like, wow, this is the way it's going to be. We're going to be like this. You know, we're going to see each other, gang. You and I are going to be together with all believers from all over the world. And when we see each other, I'm going to do the same. Like, look, look at you. Oh, my gosh. I'm looking over, I'm like looking at my friend John Parker. John, what is up? Look at you. You're looking good, man. Not that you don't look good now. You're looking good. But it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm going to have a fro like I did when I was in high school, like a giant hair. I mean, it's going to be incredible. We're going to have perfect bodies. It's going to be amazing because the old is gone and the new has come. It's better because it's new and improved, right? Well, look at this. It's better because it's been refined. I want you to think about this. It's, there's no C. Now, what, is, what does this mean? There's no C. It means a lot of things. The C was a dangerous, mysterious place uh, at, at this time. I mean, it is now. But, but, but when you think about the C, you think throughout the Bible, it, it's chaos. Even in Genesis 1. It's a place of, of terror. It's a threat. Think about the Red Sea, right? You're like, we've got to make it through. Think about, um, gosh, the flood. Think about Jesus calming the sea. He brings order to chaos. He has power over nature. It's, the sea was this, this, this kind of place where there was, there was chaos and danger. Invaders came from the sea. The Philistines, I don't even know if there were people of the sea. They came from the sea. So it's a scary place. He says that there is no longer any sea. So I think it's all of that. But think about John being on the Isle of Patmos. He's surrounded by sea. There's no more separation. There's no more isolation. Not in our personal relationships where we want to hide out from somebody or I'm not sure what you're thinking about me. I'm kind of, uh, I don't feel really confident around you or I think you're judging me or you know what, I don't like you. There's none of that. Our relationships are perfect because God is in our midst and we're worshiping him and whoever you have trouble with today. You know, you, you, Jeff, my family's kind of jacked up. Now, I'm not sure we're going to get along in heaven. I don't know. No, you are. You are. You're going to love each other as you ought to love one another now. See, this is the point. How does this all change my life? Well, there's another separation. Micah 7, 19, he says this. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Imagine a place where there's no sin. A place where the, where, where, where the fall is now long behind us and all things are redeemed. God brings us back to the original plan. He will not be defeated. His original plan will not be thwarted. We're going to find ourselves together in perfect harmony relationship. So how does that change my life today? This is what I want to do each time along the way. I will allow my past to rest with Christ. 
I'm going to be totally forgiven. He's already making me new. If you have received Christ, you're totally forgiven. He's lived the perfect life for you. I can look back at my past regardless of what I've done. And I can be set free from that because I'm no longer defined by my past. When we get to heaven, we're not going to be defined by our past. We're going to be defined by Jesus' past. And we are now. If you've received his grace, you're defined by his past. And his past, anybody, is perfect. You're covered in his righteousness. You can have relationships with others. You can love people for free. Because a lot of us have a bias for the past. And, and, and what I mean is we, we, we tend to go back to the. And the older you get, the more you do that. Because the more of a past you have to draw from, right? But many of us have a past. We have a bias towards our, our past spiritually. You know, there was a time when the Lord really spoke to my heart. Tell me about that. I don't know why you're talking that way. But, but anyway, um, I was... No, you're from, from the country. I don't know. Like 20, 20 years ago, man, the Lord just, I mean, changed my life. What's, what's he doing now? Well, you know, man, five years ago, it was just amazing. God just, he wants to, do, he wants to speak in your heart today. Today, don't rest on the past. He's doing a new thing and always toward the future. You see, believers should be more optimistic than anybody on the planet. We should be more hopeful in the way we live than anybody. We should all be futurists because we're heading. We know where we're heading. We're heading to this, what, what John has described for us. Okay, secondly, look at this. Spent more time on the first one. Secondly, our forever is better together. Our forever is better than our past, certainly, but it's better together. We will have a better community. Again, look at this. It, look at what's coming down. It's a city. Coming down with lots of people, a perfect city, no isolation, no fear. You're going to be fully known and fully loved. It's going to be perfect community together. And he says it's like a bride and a husband, a groom coming together. Think about that, the intimacy that we're going to have, not only with God, but with each other. We're going to love each other fully. There's nothing like being fully known and fully loved. There's not going to be any barriers in our relationships. We're going to have perfect relationships with people, all nations, everyone who's received Christ. Look at this. Next year, you're going to, we'll have better access to God. He will dwell with them, it says. We'll have total access to God. How many of y'all watch? Did you watch the, the royal wedding? Raise your hand. Did anybody watch this? Okay. Not, not many dudes. Okay. Um, but it was amazing. Uh, you need to go online. People freaked out over Bishop Curry's message right and it was awesome but it was gospel centered i mean i mean sorry but y'all hear that kind of message every sunday here but people were freaking out like he's talking about the love of god oh my gosh he was passionate about that wow it's like come on england let's go come on people go to church <laughs> go to church and you'll hear the message of the gospel if it's preached from Scripture as it should be, right? But And I loved it. It was amazing. But Stacey and I were talking about this. We had a friend who has a friend who we're watching this on TV, and we're like, well, oh, my gosh, that's, who's that so-and-so? We saw this, you know, this gal who's a friend of one of our friends. <laughs> that's the closest we got. Um, but, uh, but we, because we were talking about this, Stacey was noting, you know, think about all the things that we don't have access to in this world. Like, we'll never go to this. I'll never meet that person. We'll never. I wasn't invited to the royal wedding. But check it out. The arc of redemptive history, all of history is heading to a wedding. It starts with a man and woman in the garden. It starts with Christ coming to claim his bride. Each one of us who receive his grace there's going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb when God's people and Christ the groom come together and you're invited. You have access. You have access through the blood of Christ and the gospel that he has given to us, the good news that's coming our way. There's a greater wedding that's coming. And you're invited, full access for everybody here because of what Christ has done. It's not determined by how good you are. It's determined by how good he's been and that he's forgiven us. He's died on the cross. There are no more tears, no more death, no more crying, 
No more pain. The old things, the former things are gone. And you and I will experience life as it's meant to be. So what does this mean? It means I can, I can pursue genuine relationships without fear. Now. I can love you for free because all the love I need I have found in Christ. If I'm in my right place. I can love you and forgive you because there's an eternity coming. I mean, think about it. There's just a moment in time that I have to love people. Yeah, but Jeff, you don't know. I mean, people hurt me, man. People, come on. Get over yourself. There's an eternity to live where you will be with people who know Christ. Whether you like them or not, we can love each other because we know that we're all just rough drafts of the people that we are becoming. Every one of us. And so so we we can continue to trust Him. We can love others. Let me ask you, maybe this is it for you. Who do you need to forgive? Are you going to be off in eternity somewhere like, yeah, no, I didn't, I chose not to forgive them. Are you kidding me? And you're standing before the Lamb of God who took away your sin. You say, yeah, I just couldn't do it. I mean, I died not forgiving them. And I, you know, because they needed to set my way first. That's not grace. That's reciprocity. Grace says, I forgive. Friends, we can love each other freely. And so thirdly and finally, our forever is worth the wait. So don't give up. That's really my challenge. Don't give up. So don't give up because it's coming. Look at this in verse 5. It's trustworthy and true. It's as good as done. God said it. It's finished. It's coming. So don't give up because it's coming. Don't give up because it's free. Did you catch that? It's without payment. Without payment. It's the grace of God. You don't insert your credit card when you get to heaven. You, you, you don't bust out a list of the good things you've done before a holy God. Are you kidding me? You come before him and he says, what have you done with my son? I just fell at his feet. I gave him my life. Because I got nothing to offer. I am messed up, jacked up with all my sin, my addiction, my challenges, my unforgiveness. And for free, he gives me this marvelous grace that he wants me to live in now. So friend, don't give up. Don't give up because it's worth it. Not everyone will be there. This is what he's saying in verse 8. Because it's not by works, it's by grace. All we have to do is believe. I say it often. If you don't know for sure that you've received Christ and that you're going to be there with the rest of us when we all get to heaven, if you don't know, today is your day. That's why the Lord brought you here. On this Memorial Day weekend, when we pause and think about the one who's died, for us all, to set us free. It's worth it. So I'd ask you, what are you waiting for? What's next for you? You can know. When you leave this earth, you can know. So, how can I not give up? Well, I don't give up by following Jesus every day. I don't give up when I give my life to the one who's given his life for me. He's making everything new. And he's doing it now. Lean into the truth who he says about who you are, about your past, about your present, about your future. Hold on to the truth and don't give up because it's worth every single day. And no matter what happens to you and I now, it's only for our good. Isn't that amazing? Regardless of what comes to you, when you're in Christ, even the worst things are becoming the best things. And if you're walking through a season right now and you're thinking, man, it's not all right, it's not right listen if it's not right yet it's because it's not yet over he's making all things new and he's doing it in your heart now as you trust him so I want us to bow our heads and just close our eyes we're gonna we're gonna sing a song together before we close just to celebrate the day because there's coming a day let me ask you what's next for you Do you know that you know that you know that you are a child of God? And if you've never received his grace right now, I want to ask you to do so. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart and make me the person you've created me to be. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I believe. Help me with my unbelief. 
but I give you my life. Friends, our forever is better. It's better than our past. It's better together. And it is worth the wait. Don't give up. Because one day, one day, he's coming. One day, we will stand together as a resurrected people on a resurrected earth, worshiping a resurrected Savior. When we all get to heaven, we will celebrate the Lamb, the one who died in our place. Why don't we start right now? Let's celebrate what he has done for us.